Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be doing subfascia on this run here. We're gonna show you the math it takes to cut your tails at the right length, how to chalk your tails twice, and how to put on the subfascia when you're all done. So let's get to it. Okay, so for our subfascia, we're putting a two by six board, this is very common, on the tails. And nine out of 10 times, we're gonna plumb cut our tails which means we're gonna draw a line straight up and down here, cut that, and nail this board on. Now, every house has a different overhang. The most common one is a two foot overhang in our area. Now, the way we measure the overhang is from the rough framing, so right on this heel here, to the face of our subfascia. We do not go off of the sheeting. We wanna go from the rough framing to the face. So in this example, we have a 16 inch overhang. So 16 inches off of this heel needs to be the face of our two by six board. So since our two by six is an inch and a half wide, we're gonna go back an inch and a half. So that equals 14 and a half. That's where we're gonna make our mark off of the heel. Then. We're gonna take our set square. Uh, this is quicker than a normal speed square, believe it or not. You can set the actual roof pitch right on it and butt it into the bottom or the top of the tail, whichever works, and we'll trace our line up. So this line is where we're going to cut our tail so that when we put this on, we have our 16 inch overhang. If you were doing it with a two foot overhang, you would take 24 inches minus an inch and a half and you would get 22 and a half inches. That would be what you pull off of the heel if you're doing a two foot overhang. You'd pull off 22 and a half, and that's where we're gonna cut our tail. To get all of our tails cut in a straight line, we're gonna chalk a line from one end of the house to the other. Now, this is a long run here, so we're, it's actually too long, too windy to chalk it once. So we're gonna pull it super tight to this end, and then we're gonna go down in the middle and carefully put our finger on it, pushing straight down and snap each side. Right here is where we're gonna hold our chalk line over very tight so that it will average out and make a straight line between our 14 and a half and our 14 and a half. So let's chalk it. So the reason we're snapping the line here is so that this board is perfectly straight. It doesn't wave in and out of the house. If we just measured off of every heel, the board would wave in and out. So when you're chalking this line, you really wanna make sure it's straight. You don't want the wind blowing it and you don't want it bouncing around. A good way of thinking about it is to pull the line straight up, not, not perpendicular to the roof angle. If you pull it perpendicular to the roof angle, it's gonna bounce in on the lower tails, which is gonna make your line curvy. So you wanna pull it straight up with gravity and let it drop straight down. Then you wanna look down your line and make sure that it looks straight. You may have to re-chalk it with a different color if you didn't get a good snap. So now that we got our line snapped all the way down, we're gonna take our set square and we're gonna trace this line down. We wanna make sure that we're right on this line here. When you're cutting these tails, uh, the best practice is to cut up. This way you can look at the blade cutting the line. You wanna make sure to keep the blade on the outside of the line because we wanna save this side of the board. We wanna split this line right in half. Make sure it's a square cut. Your saw needs to be square. Can't be leaning, that will kick it out. So we're gonna make this cut here. Just like that. Now we're gonna go down this line and cut our tails. When we're making this plumb cut here, 
we're drawing the actual roof pitch on the truss. So if I was using a speed square, I would be setting it to a 212 pitch and tracing the line there. And if I'm using a set square, I would be setting the set square to a 212 pitch and drawing the line there. You draw your line at whatever the roof pitch is and that makes sure your cut and your line is straight up and down. Now, if you don't have a set square, I highly recommend getting one off of Amazon. But if you are just getting it done, you don't have one on site, what we make is this little jig here. We call it a, a tail plane because it looks like an airplane. All you do is cut your 212 pitch or whatever your roof pitch is in the end here. And then you nail a piece of sheeting on the top. So then you line it up with your line here. If this was your line, and then you just go down and trace it on each one. That does your roof pitch the same every time. It's a cool little trick. If you guys are getting any value out of this video, please hit the subscribe button. We're doing a video on every skill it takes to frame a quality house. So after you got all your tails cut, before you put the subface on, the way we do it is to chalk a line at the top of your subfascia. This, this makes sure that your subfascia doesn't go up and down with the truss tails. We want to chalk a line and ignore all of these tails so that this is perfectly straight on the top and bottom. That makes it easier for soffit, fascia, gutters, etc. So to figure out where this chalk line is, depends on the roof pitch. A lot of people, when they nail their subfish on, they flush it with the top here. Now, that's fine, but the only way it supports the sheeting there is if you run it out to the edge. And if you run it out to the edge, this sheeting is actually sticking past your subfascia. Now, what we're trying to do is instead of flushing it like that, we want to lift it up a little bit so that the sheeting catches and is supported here before it hits the edge. We do not want the sheeting sticking past the edge of the subfascia. So you can see that the steeper the roof pitch, the further down that line's gonna be. Like if this was actually where it sat, coming off of our tail, then we are like an inch below on a super steep roof because we wanna be able to support that sheeting but not overhang it. The reason we don't want the sheeting sticking past the edge of the subfascia is because when the gutter apron, the piece of metal that goes on here, when it gets nailed on, if it's loose because it's overhanging, because the sheeting is kicking it out, that creates a possible rattle in the fascia because that gutter apron needs to be tight to our fascia so we wanna make sure the sheeting isn't kicking it out. If after you sheet your roof, your sheeting is overhanging, you wanna go back and cut that flush. The face of the subfascia should be as far as the sheeting goes. So to figure out where to chalk your line on the face of these tails, so we wanna bring this down and we wanna support it here. We're about a quarter inch below the top of our tail. So that's where we're gonna set our nail and chalk our line from. I like to use these two pieces to figure out where to chalk that line on the heel, uh, depending on the roof pitch. Now, with all that being said, tails are never perfect. These guys are gonna go up, down, sideways, all over the place. So there are gonna be runs of tails that you encounter where the sheeting is just sticking up above your subfascia and it sucks but it is what it is. Other times when you chalk your line, the sheeting is gonna bow up a little bit because we're chalking a straight line and these tails are not perfect. So we just set this measurement on each end and we cross our fingers and hope these tails are straight. Okay, so here we are on the other side. We got our chalk line on the face on that quarter inch mark. Now, just looking down these tails, I can see that this one kicks up. It's probably a quarter inch higher than this one. So when I chalk this face mark, I'm gonna chalk to this truss because this tail is in line with all the others 
and this is one of the only ones that bumps up. So we'll make a mark a quarter inch down here, and we'll pull this line really tight because of the wind and the distance. We're looking down to make sure it doesn't sag, and we'll snap the face. So looking down this line here, you can see that it's below a quarter inch below the top of the tail. Uh, it's about half an inch on some of these. That's what I was talking about with when you run a straight line, these don't always line up here because the tails go up and down. That's why we chalk a line on the face so that our subfish is extremely straight. So when you're chalking this line here, um, some runs are just way too long and it has some sag in it. So you're gonna have to chalk two lines and measure down in the middle. If you do chalk two lines, that one in the middle that you chalk off of, you wanna make sure that it doesn't dip way down or way up. You wanna look down and make sure it's similar to the other tails so that you get a consistent line all the way across. We have about an eighth inch of sag here over this 40 foot run. Um, we're just gonna cover the line in the center and that will balance that out. So for running this tail on the end here, you can just hook your chalk line and line it up with the tail right there. Just slightly bump into it. And that's where you cut this one. You can also make a mark out here that we'll use to straighten this subfascia. So now we got all of our tails cut in a straight line and we got our line chalked on the face of the tails for where we nail this subfascia on. Now, this is a tricky part because we're trying to straighten this subfascia out. Sometimes this isn't nailed on yet, and you'll do that after. But right here, this is running long. So we're gonna butt into it. And we wanna nail it in the right place so that it straightens this out. I like to try doing it with measurements first, and then if it's a little bit off, I'll fix it and straighten it with my eyes. So to mark out your subfascia for the trusses, you wanna think about how these are spaced right here. Now our first one is a three quarter drop. So we have 23, and a quarter is what it should be from the outside of this gable tail to the inside of this first truss. After this, we have a 14 and a half inch overhang here. With our subfascia, that's 16 inches. So we're gonna pull off 14 and a half, make a mark. Then we're gonna go 23 and a quarter, make a mark. And then right here, we have one foot on center. So we'll go one foot, make a mark. And then these are just two foot on center the rest of the way. Now I got my marks all the way out to eight foot, which is the center of this 16 foot two by six. So I'm gonna be able to hold this up here and nail this mark directly on this tail. And ideally that should straighten our subfascia on the end. But like I mentioned, you have to go back and make sure it's straight, maybe fix it with your eyeball. The reason we put these marks here, especially at the beginning of a run, is so that when we go to sheet it, all of these tails land where they're supposed to. Especially in this case, around the seven or eight foot mark, the sheeting is gonna land and split this tail. So when we're putting our first sheet on, we want to know that we can split this tail and it's right where it needs to go. If the tail was kicked and we flush that sheeting up halfway, then it might be in the wrong spot and we, when we go up the truss, it would be in the wrong spot. So these marks just help make sure our, all of our tails and trusses are straight. So here I am in the center of the board. I'm gonna lift it up here and I wanna put it right on this chalk line. I'm looking right across the top of this, lining it right up on that mark we made. And then we'll do, go two nails through these two by four tails. You can see this tail is kicked off of our mark because it dives off at the end here. So we'll pull it over, making sure we're on our chalk line. Here's the tail I was talking about that's high. So right at the end here, you can see that this top of the two by six doesn't make it to the end of this two by six here. It planes down kind of in the middle. 
And that's because of how we set our subfascia. Because if you plane this down, it hits before. So we want it to hit right near the end of that. So we'll lift it up a little bit so that it matches the same plane as these tails. Now we can look up this and see if it looks straight or not. Now it kicks in a little bit. So you can just tap it out. I don't tap it out more than an eighth or three sixteenths ever. The nails are the only thing that's holding this. Um, once the sheeting ties it all in together, it'll be fine. We got our truss nailed on layout here, so we can just keep pulling off of it to make our marks going down the line. So here we are at the end of our first fascia board, and we're just gonna cut it right in the center. We're not gonna seam it on a truss. Now we're gonna take a 22 and a half inch block and put it between our tails. For this top front edge, we're gonna flush it with the top of our tail. The reason we split our subfascia between the truss tails instead of on a truss tail is because if one of these tails was higher, it would make a kink in our subfascia, especially if it moved. We got our board spliced in the middle there. It's not nailed to the two by six block yet. We got this marked out, ready for a truss. So we're gonna hold it up here, butting it in tight to the other. And you can see I have a clamp here so that I can move it over to my mark. This truss is a little rolled. So I'm butted up tight there. I'm on my chalk line. And we can pull layout off of this truss. So here we are on our splice and we're gonna nail this tail first. Then you can see these, the bottoms of these subfascia don't quite line up. These boards are a different width. So we're gonna pry this one up, pry this down and flush up the bottom. We care about the bottom a lot more than the top because the top just gets covered up. The bottom sets your run for your fascia. We got our bottoms pretty close to flush here and we're spliced. Now we're ready to finish out this run. Here we are on the other end and we're trying to straighten this out. So I'm just gonna hold my tape up here if the wind will allow me to. And I'm gonna push this out till it looks straight on here. And we got 74 and 13 sixteenths gets us straight. So that's what we'll cut our board to. So now we got our whole subfascia run done. It's super straight in and out and super straight up and down. So now we just take our set square and trace down this line here on the outside so we can make this cut flush. Now we have this little uh, triangle sticking out below our subfascia. The steeper the roof, the bigger this triangle gets. Now we want to trace it back across this inch and a half so that it's flat all the way around this corner. And there you have it. That's how you do subfascia. The end.